Hello, thank you for watching this video. So, in this video, we're doing question 4 of May June 2024, which is very mathematics paper 1. The topic is the functions, and uh, we have hyperbola here, as you can see here. So, question 4 Given g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1 plus 2, so we are given that g of x is equal to this, you know that this is right, no problem, just given this equation here for our function g. What are they saying? They are saying write down the equations of the asymptotes of g so they want us to show where the asymptotes of g are so this is 4.1 they want the equations of the asymptotes where the asymptotes are so the first one to see the first one just cover this y is equal to 2 y is equal to 2 because g of x is y so the first one will be at y is equal to 2 this is the first one and this is the horizontal one and the vertical one is the one out here, down here. So this one down here, you equate it to zero and solve for x. So x minus one is equal to zero. So your x is equal to one. So this is the second equation. So this is the first equation, and this is your second equation of the asymptote. And we're done here. Move to the next one, 4.2. What are they saying at 4.2? They are saying, Draw the graph of G indicating the intercepts with the x's and the asymptotes. So they want us to plot this thing here, this function here. So they want us to plot G of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1 uh, plus 2. They want to see the x intercepts and y intercepts. No problem. That's what they say they want to say. What do we do? We can say okay. Um, um, this is what we can do. We can say okay. Uh, we'll put our function here. These are the y axis, right? The equations for the y axis is x equal to zero, because along the y axis, x is zero the whole time. And these are the x axis. The equation for the x is, is, is y is equal to 0 because y is 0 throughout this line because above this line y is positive and below this line y is negative so on that line y is 0 similarly along this line x is 0 because this side x is positive x values are positive and this side x values are negative so here is the equation of this vertical line which is the y axis is x equal to 0 and the equation of the horizontal line is y is equal to 0 no problem. So, they want us to see, find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So, what is the x-intercept? The x-intercept is where your function crosses the x-axis. So, you want to see, what does it cross the x-axis? Does it cross here? Does it cross here? Does it cross wherever? That's the position where the graph crosses the x-axis. Right? And the y-intercept, you want to know where is your function crossing the y-axis here. So here the way it is, does it cross here or does it cross there? Does it cut like this? Cut down here? That's what you're talking about. No problem. So let's do the x intercept, right? Let's do the x intercept. If we're looking for the x intercept, we want to see what does it cut the, the x axis. So you want to know what does it cut here, right? No problem. So your coordinates are going to be x and y, right? They, they will be in this form, the coordinates of where it passes. Because if it passes here, maybe, it's going to be 0 and 0. But look, along this line, we know the equation of this line, which is these are the x-axis. The equation of the x-axis is y equal to 0. So along this line, y is 0 the whole time. So we know the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate should be 0 along this line because if you're looking for the x-intercept, you want to know what does it cross here. So if it crosses here, the y value should be zero. So you should know that the coordinates of the x-intercept, they always look like this. So if you want the x-intercept, the coordinates will always look like this. It will be the x value and the y value that is zero because along that line, y is zero, like I said there. So you have these coordinates. You have half of the coordinates, the y value, to be zero. Take this y value of yours and substitute it here and find the x value. So you will have the full coordinates. Let's do that. So what do we do? It's okay. On G, G, this is Y, so you put 0. 
is equal to what? 1 over x minus 1 plus 2. And then you solve for x. Take this to the side, so we have minus 2 equal to 1 over x minus 1. Then you cross multiply. This times that you have minus 2 times x minus 1 is equal to 1 times 1, which is 1. This times this, multiply this bracket out, so it's negative 2x, negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is equal to 1. Therefore, negative 2x is equal to negative 1 because you transpose the 2 to this side. So what you will have is um, 1 minus 2. So your negative 2x is equal to what? Is equal to negative 1. Therefore, your x is equal to 1 over 2. So, which means you found that x value to be 1 over 2. So your coordinates is 1 over 2 and 0. So your graph will pass somewhere here at 1 over 2 and 0 at this point here. Done. Now, you want to know what does it cross on this line? So you want the y intercept. Now, you want the what? The y intercept. You want the y intercept. So you want to know why does it cuts the y axis. If it cuts the y axis somewhere here or here, the x value is, is not changing along this line, it's zero the whole time. So the coordinates of that point will be zero and y because the y along, along the x along this line is zero the whole time. So you have the coordinates, they will look like this. So you are missing the y value. So to find the y value, substitute your x value here, then you find the y value. So, g at 0 is equal to, or maybe you can just say y, because you want the y value. Is equal to, because you take your y here, put your y here, and put 0 there. So, it will be 1 over 0 minus 1 plus 2. Therefore, your y is equal to the answer to this, which is equal to 1. So, which means your graph also cuts square at 1, which is there. Right? So the coordinates are 0 and 1. That's where we are. So we have the intercept. So it will cut the y axis here, then the x axis is there. What we're missing, we're missing the asymptotes now. Where are our asymptotes? Y is at x, is y is equal to 2. So y is equal to 2 is here. So if you have a function that is y is equal to 2, um, it's horizontal because y is not changing. Look at here, you, this is y is equal to 0, it's horizontal. So y is equal to 2 is parallel to this one. So it will be a line like this one. Here is the asymptote. It's y is equal to 2. You can see this is parallel to that. These two are parallel. Parallel to the y axis, to the x axis. You can see they have a similar equation because the equation of a of a horizontal line is always like that. It's y is equal to a constant. No problem. Now, where is the vertical asymptote? The vertical asymptote is at x equal to 1. So it's at x equal to 1. Let's say x equal to 1 is here. So the vertical asymptote is like that. So this should be vertical. Right? So this is x is equal to 1. So this is x is equal to 1 at this point. You can see this one is y x equal to 0, and this one is called x equal to 1. So if you have a vertical line passing through a, a point, the line for that equation will be x equal to that point. Fine. And then the next thing that we do, we just plot our function now. So uh, you know parabola, it's, it's positive. So it will be this side and that side. So you join these. And other one should be on that side there. So the asymptote continues that way, right? So I'll say the other one should be uh, maybe like that. Something like this. So this function here is your g. Done with 4.2. Go to the next one, which is 4.3. That's what they're looking for. Uh, 4.3.
What are they saying at 4.3? They are saying, determine for which values of x is g of x greater than 0. So, they want us to find the values of x, of x, where g of x is greater than 0. So, they want the values of x, right, where our function is positive. Where our function is greater than 0. Which is, what is g of x? g of x. I said g of x. I said it here. g of x is y. Because look here. We put y there. Because when we're looking for this, put 0 here and position x, y there. So they want the values of x for which our y is greater than 0. Which is our function is greater than 0. Right? But we know our function is equal to 0 along this line here. Right? But look. So now, if you look at it, Look above, look above, look the, for the values of x, which your graph is above zero. So your graph is above zero, up here, which is, this part is all above zero, and that part is all above zero. Right? So what is the interval? So this goes to negative infinity, to that point. And after this point, going that way. So your values of x, they should be all the values from minus infinity to where? To 1 over 2. Our function, uh, or not to 1 over 2, or before 1 over 2, it is above 0. Because this point is equal to 0, 1 where it is above, strictly above. And then, together with what? Together with this interval, after our vertical is 1, 2, positive, infinity. Or 1, say, our x should be less than 1 over 2, or our x should be greater than 1. That's where our g of x will be greater than 0. So, that's how I think of it. So, I think it should be less than a half and greater than a 1. Those are my values. We're done here. So, we're going to 4.4. What are they saying at 4.4? They are saying now, determine the equation of the x of symmetry of j, which has a negative gradient. So they want us to find the, the x of symmetry of this function that have a negative gradient. So the one that have a negative gradient will pass here, right? Go up, it will like this. It will pass there. And you know this gradient is equal to minus 1. The one that have a positive gradient passes this way. This gradient is equal to 1. You know the coordinates of this point is 1 and and uh, and 2 because this point is 2 here. So you find the equation of that the equation of that line there. So that line is y is equal to um, negative x plus c. And you know the point is 1 and 2. We pass it through 1 and 2. Right? So you find the value of c. So 2 is equal to negative x, which is 1. C, therefore, your C is equal to 3. Therefore, the equation of a line of symmetry or x of symmetry negative x plus 3. So, this is the x of symmetry that has a negative gradient. And this question is finished. Easy 10 marks. And I hope it does make sense to you as it does to me. Thank you for watching. Cheers.